Okay. The proud and the pointy eyed. Seer is a man at the end of his tether. I need to speak to Maya. I've been scouring the archives for any information regarding temporal magic since last we spoke, and the results have been rather troubling, to say the least. As many as you may or may not be aware, ancient ally is portrayed in the Enchiridion as a cautionary tale, a great empire brought low by its vanity and hubris. However, there are certain uh, opro-cyprical tests in which uh, the Alligans are cast in a more sympathetic light, if not outright exalted. Twas in these texts I found references to temporal magics once wielded by Alligan mages. Uh, said mages could be used to halt or even reverse the temporal state of a given object. So like a, uh, a time stone, maybe? If these accounts are to be believed, and if Gigi's abilities and these magics are one and the same, then it may very well possible for him to turn back the hands of time for the Grand Sirs. Much as he restored the Duke's priceless laws. That being said, there is no telling how this will work with regards to a living being. Consider, if you will, that the vase was filled with water when shattered. Even if the vessel were restored, what would become of the former contents? Would it be filled with water as before, the very same, every drop returned, or would it be a different water? Or would the water once split be forever lost? Speak of the my soul, my friend, for even if one could use these magics to restore the dead to life, would they be as they were before, with all the same thoughts and memories and feelings? The Grand Sirs are convinced that they can regain their lost youth, and mayhap they can, but the dead who have entered into Halone's halls cannot return. They cannot, yet Gigi is nevertheless resolved to try and resurrect Archmage's Quan. Ah, speaking of which, according to some Charlian texts in the archives, Archmage's Quan was an accomplished scholar known for his study of ancient Alligan uh, magics. Alligan. Further evidence that Gigi's abilities are likely derived from ancient traditions, I suppose. And more importantly, I learned the location of the Archmagus's former residence. Mayhap we could find something of interest there. Something which could help us persuade Gigi to change his course. I had a mind to summon Inspector Hildebrand and make this journey there. Would you be willing to join us? Excellent, let us be on our business. I saw you, heretic. I beg your pardon, are you accusing me of being a heretic? Yes, you Inquisitor Seer. I saw you sneak into the archives and seek out the forbidden terms. Saw the mad light in your eyes as you partook of their forbidden knowledge. Oh, for the love of, I did that all for my investigation. Ah, you admit your crimes that you did secretly. Without permission, in blatant contravention of our rules, we read for forbidden tomes, then by virtue of the authority vested in me in Saint Sacred Tribunal of Hellenic Inquisitory Doctrine. That's a mouthful to say. You, you stupid ignorant. You so desperate to keep your god's damn jobs that you go around accusing the world and his wife of heresy? Is that what we've been reduced to? Honestly, that's what, what Ishgard has been this whole time. Save for, like, uh, Horshafond and Count Edmund. Sick and tired of looking for heretics in every bloody shadow, of trying to guess the secret sins of everyone I meet. It's stupid and pointless, and we're all better than that, damn it. We're better than that. He finally had enough of Ishgard's, uh, BS. If you will not surrender yourself, then I have no choice but to inform my superiors. Well, that all came tumbling out, didn't it? Suppose there's no point in trying to convince myself that I have no personal investment in this matter, or that I should have still have a professional one. 
Somewhere along the way, I stopped looking for the guilty and started looking for, for the truth. Perhaps in a way to help those in need. But there's no place like for people like that in this Inquisition, is there? It's only a matter of time before the stuttering fool comes back with an armed guard. Let us depart for Idleshire at once. We need find the inspector. So even he is not taking the BS of what Ishgard has been like for generations. Like the Holy See and their like a uh, their loose, uh, their loose edge about testing everyone as heretic if they don't fall in line with the Holy See. Like, that's... It's nice to see that with, like, um, the other residents of Ishgard. And I kind of get the feeling we've, uh, tugged at that string, so we'll see more of that later on in, uh, the, the patch stuff. Alright, let's talk to uh, these guys. Looking for the inspector, he went off in his lonesome. God damn it, Hildy, I raised you to have better sense than this. It would seem we arrived too late. Inspector Hildebrand has already gone off on his own to confront the Grand Sirs. They came back briefly to trade Jingle Shine for supplies and whatnot, you see, and the Gobby's ear caught them trading tongue flaps about killing dragons in the Forelands. When the inspector learned about that later, he said he had to get after them right away and back take Gigi. He said he had a duty not as an inspector, but as a father. Bugger that, he's got no obligations to a bloody mammoth, especially one I chose to leave on its own free will. As I recall, I swear. Turn my back on the boy for one bleeding second and he loses his god's damn mind. Afraid he might try to do something reckless. Don't you think we ought to try to find him and offer hand lending? I'm gonna uh, kind of stop it with the, the voice acting. My throat is really, really hurting. <laughs> so I won't do like as much uh, voice acting. Remember to hydrate. I'm rather more convinced about what will happen if the Grand Sirs attack, or worse, kill any of her. Race Valgar's brood. Huh. First things first, I suppose. Be so kind as to assist Mistress Nashu and Julian in their search for the Inspector. We'll pay a visit to Archmage's Quan's abandoned abode in the meantime. Oh, and before you think to refuse, know that you need not fear for my safety. Let's just say that our singular experience together have inured me to the harsh realities of, well, reality. Oh, could it be the scrawny little shite's finally found his spine? Let's start by hitting the tail feather. I reckon the inspector probably went there to ask first about after the Grand Sirs. So if we do the same, we'll sure to catch up with him eventually. Okie doke. Right then, I say we split up and make inquiries separately. If you learn anything about the Inspector or the Grand Sirs or Gigi, come and tell me. Why did we have to come outside in order to do that? And then, like, come back inside? Guardians with the Mammoth. They were here, I, proclaiming to all and sundry that they were going to slay the greatest dragon of them all. Gods only know if the naive fools were serious. Oh, those death sots. They were, f they were for Annex Trine. Not sure what their intentions were, but they were awfully confident. Much I recall. Three dragon slayers and a mammoth. Eh? I'd call you a mummer if I hadn't seen them come through earlier, boasting about how they were off to kill the biggest one yet. Uh, Nashu.
What's up? Ah, oh, I see. So the Grandsters were headed for Annex Trine. And my dear boy wasn't far behind them either. And what are we waiting for? Let's go, let's go. I like this short team up with these three. That's really cool. The poor unfortunate soul bearing a striking resemblance to Orland is quite firmly embedded in the earth. Do you look at that? The inspector sure gave him what for. That may be, but where did the other two get to, not to mention the mammoth? Why don't we pull him out and ask? Though having said that, it looks easier said than done. Oh, how silly of me. I'm sure you've got more than enough strength to yank him free, right, Tomeo? It's our mas massaging hands again. Well, I'll be. He's wearing some kind of magic, magic mask, which makes him look just like the inspector, just like the man of a thousand faces back in Ulta. No, that's Hildebrand, all right. There's no fooling a mother's eye. I say, what troubles my beloved son got himself into this time? Hi, Godbert. Hello there, Lord Godbert and Inspector Seer. How did you two end up traveling together? Blind fortune, you might say. It was too far from Tailfeather when night began to fall. And unfortunately, Lord Godbert chanced to find me wandering in the wilderness. Lord Edmund told me all about this recent trouble with the Grand Sirs, as well as Hildy's investigation. And a father cannot help but take in an interest in his son's affairs, can't he? For me, I was eager to share with you my latest findings, namely Archmage Quan's research notes. Oh, I haven't slept like that since I was buried in the lichard. Well, well, I must confess, no small measure of embarrassment to be found in such a state, having been so unceremoniously disposed of by the Grand Sirs. But ignom ignominy. Notwithstanding, I am most grateful for your succor, and pleasantly surprised to be reunited with you all. So wouldn't it have happened if you waited for us instead of... Wait, when the hell are you still wearing that rubbish? An impenetrable, impenetrable disguise is essential when consorting with the criminal elements. Alas, to what it seemed, the Grand Sirs have grown more perceptive in their newfound youth. Wait, do you mean they've already regained their youth? What about Gigi? Did you see him? Was he behaving strangely? Now that you mention it, his warm, soulful eyes were rather more pointy than I remember. By the fury, not pointy. According to Archmage's Quan's notes, that's a sign Gigi's using too much magic. If he carries on like this, his aether will be expended and he'll end up not more than an empty husk. That is terrible news. We must catch up to the Grand Sir at once. Do you know where they're headed? All I heard is they were taken keen to slay dragons. They were bound for the churning mists, a place called Zenith, to kill a great worm named Nidhogg. Um... But I killed Nidhogg. Really? That all happened? Hmm, I meant the other one, Race Valga. Race Valger, fury take me, what could they possibly hope to achieve? Oh boy, this got juicy. <laughs> Race Valger's still mad at us for uh for all that's happened. So like I don't blame him for uh I could turn back time. Okay, there it is. Also known as Vivi, but a secret is safe with you. Mm hmm. Hildebrand wishes to entreat your aid in a matter of grave import. Okay, let's go. 
I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, Inspector Extraordinaire, do hereby ask you all to aid me in rescuing my son and putting a stop to the Grand Sir's machinations. You know, there's really no need for all that. We came because we wanted to help. I, Inashu, faithful assistant, maker of explosives extraordinaire, do hereby present to you this fresh change of clothing. Capital, I knew I could count on you, Nashu. I shall change in route. Come, my friends, to Zenith and to Gigi. Okay, so speaking of which, let us... I think it's time for a change as well. So, uh, we shall join up with them, and we shall also don some new garments to wrap up uh, this, uh, this investigation. So, let us do that. Ah, uh, yes, we are ready to go. We are equipped for battle. Let us do that. Alright, we are ready. So, perfect tag team, our perfect, uh, our perfect battle armor ready to go. Huh, to think I stand in the heart of Dravanian territory. Me, how long ago I was scouring the streets for heretics. The disguises may be amazing, but nothing beats the classic inspector look. I totally agree. I feel gentlemanly wearing it. Spending too much time at this high altitude can't be good for my skin. I say, what brilliant craftsmanship have how did they manage? Make ready, my friends. The final battle with the Grand Sirs is at hand. It would seem my wounds were more serious than I thought. I fear I am in no condition to confront our foes. There is but one thing that can restore me to my formidable, indomitable self. Do I gotta massage you again? Don't worry, I got some sal- Yeah, I, I, I have to. Shall mommy give her baby boy a massage? Okay, my dearest mummy. Mother dearest, I would not oppose upon you, not when my ever loyal associate. Yeah, I, I have to do it. Ready to minister my muscles. Yep. Don't tell me you're embarrassed. Let mommy take care of little, little Hildy's hurts. My dear wife, I know you mean well, but let Tomea handle it. There is a bond which transcends time and space and personal boundaries. <laughs> what about my personal boundaries? That's the way of it. I'm counting on you, Tamiya. Okay. Let us brook no further delay. Come, my friend. Put my body in oil, as you have done many a time before. Oil him up and give him a tan. Manda, 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 man. man, man. Uh, let me look at the salamander oil. It rubs the oil on his skin. It does this whenever it is told. Nice. Why do you hesitate? Have we not done this time and again? Oil me up, woman. My god. Oh, how it soothes and aches my pains. Quickly now, knead it into my flesh. Knead as you had never kneaded before. Massage Hildebrand. Like, these people are watching me massage Hildebrand. At the very least, I would have found a space to, like, do this in private. Ah, oh, the rel. Gah, such furious kneading. I applaud your enthusiasm. But mayhap I urge you to use excessive force. Ha ha, nay, you are in the right. Already the gentle warmth begins to spread throughout my body. The fires of righteousness burn anew in my breast. Hold, my son, though your passion is renewed. 
you may yet be spurred to greater feats of mandeville strength. Derived from the purest essence of salamanders, the ancient legacy of House Mandeville, Salamanderville. What? <laughs> to you, my beloved son, now become a proud father, I bequeath this most sacred of oils. Salamanderville, could it be that the legends were true? What is going on? Your muscles shall shine with the brilliance of a thousand suns. No mortal man will have the power to do you harm. Verily, it is so. For by grace did I once weather the slings and arrows of a bandit horde and bring my hammer of justice to bring upon their wicked heads. The time has come, Tamea. Take this oil and help Hilti become the Mandeville man he was meant to be. So we stripped naked an elder, we massaged the elder, and now we're massaging Hildebrand in front of people with salamander oil. This is the life of a warrior of light. <laughs> okay. Uh, the best of the best from Mandeville Man. Uh, oh, it's, it's a song. To the best of the best for a Mandeville Man to rise up to the top as the cream only can. So for the lack of a logical plan, massage the Manda Mandeville Man. Oh, oh, the Salamanderville. How it flows into every nook and cranny. Quickly now, lay your hands upon me. Massage me with all your might. <sighs> massage Hildebrand again. Ugh, yes, that is the spirit. I can feel it building and rising. Rising. Okay, I have to flex too. Since uh, we're here. <laughs> nice. Okay, we're ready to go. Ugh, such passion, such fervor. I am the infernal unbound, the tempest unleashed, but I have not yet begun to pose. Massage Hildebrand once more, with feeling. Rock, I am a Manda, Manda, Mandeville man. Haha, -ha, that Salamanderville is my word. I have never felt so alive. Such vibrant colors, such intense sounds, such <coughs> fragrant smells. Mother, father, Tomea, it was your oils and your strong yet tender fingers which opened my eyes to the glory of creation. I am a gentleman inspector reborn. Onward to Zenith, no matter the laws of nature they pervert or the limits they break, the Grandsons can do not to stop me. Oh yeah, I am so glad I wore this outfit. <laughs> nice landing.
Oh, they're young. Grant, sirs, I have come for my son. Oh, must we do this now? We have a dragon to slay. There is no need for any of this. The war is over. But not for long. The worm's death will give rise to a new era and fire and blood. And we, having consumed his eyes, will use our new powers to win untold glory on the battlefield. Our legends will echo in eternity. You're literally going to start another Dragon Song War by doing this. You would doom countless innocents for glory? No, I won't allow it. Over my dead body. If all feed from us to deny you, then this is the end for you. The ultimate end. Like, any one of these two can just end it right now. But they're giving Hildy his moment. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, damn. He's getting his butt kicked. I think we need more salamander oil. Hold on, was that a Knights of the Round reference? I just thought about it. That might have been like a Knights of the Round reference. Because I think they did attack like 12 times. Have faith, my love. He is... He is our son. Yeah, let him have his moment. Gigi, my beautiful boy. Pray do not look on me with such pointy eyes. Let Papa Hildi take you home to our gazebo. Stop calling me that. My name is Vivi. I remember everything. My power, my purpose, my Grandpa Quan. I made them young again, but it's not enough. I need more. More. I need the worm's eyes, and then I can finally bring him back. I'm sorry, Gigi, but you cannot. Grandpapa Quan is gone. He's right, Gigi. Mayhap you could restore his corporeal form and breathe life into it, but his soul, what made him your grandpapa, is forever beyond your reach. That's not true. I could restore anything to its ideal form, to the way it should even been. Grandpapa Quan, even you, Papa Hildy. Please, Gigi, you have to stop. If you keep using your power, you'll die. Oh, 
Huh. I don't understand. Your clothes are still dirty and tattered. Flex. Flex. I'm glad this is taking place at night. As they should be, Gigi, for my every waking moment is as God's intended. Every day I live life to the fullest. Every day I enjoy grand adventures. I found your grandpapa's research notes. What he gave you was the power to make things the way they were. He gave you the power to change the world. To make things the way you yourself believe they should be. That's why your magic has no effect on the inspector. Because you know in your heart that this battered and bruised form of his is in his own way right. My thoughts exactly, Inquisitor Seer, and it is for this self-same reason that you were unable to make me Grandmaster Quan younger. In your heart you knew that it was not that needed to be changed. Your beloved grandpapa was exactly as he should be. Your every day was to be treasured and worthy of celebration. Then what about the Grand Sirs? Was I able to make them young again? All you truly knew of them were the stories they told, wondrous tales of daring do by heroes of the prime of their lives. It's no wonder you were able to envision them as such. And that's all they talked about when they were young and full of fire. At first, Archmagus Quan didn't understand the true nature of your abilities. He struggled to deduce why you couldn't make him younger as he originally intended. Eventually, he realized that your fond memories of him were preventing you from conceiving of him as anything but an elderly creator, and that the only way to achieve his goal was to only to be taken would be to take them from you. But you were all he had left in the world, no longer a mere mammoth, but a friend, family, his only family, his grandson. He couldn't bear to lose you, so he renounced his quest for immortality. But I still lost my memories in the end. He was afraid of leaving you all alone in the world, afraid that others would attempt to take advantage of you and your magics. So before he died, he decided to take your memories from you after all, to protect you. Despite his best efforts, something remained, something stronger and more powerful and more resilient than anything Archmagus Quan ever dared dream. You were never broken, Gigi. You were never abandoned. All he wanted was to set you free. Free, free to do what? Whatever you like, Gigi. Don't you see? That was his final gift to you. A new life. A new story all your own. I love when he does that. This has all been very, very touching, but we're not getting any younger. Well, you aren't at any rate. We have suffered through your meddling long enough. I have attended to use this trap to kill the worm, but since you're so perfectly positioned... GG Flex Flex E <gasps> Like father like son
I am Vivi, grandson of Archmagus Quan and Gigi, son of Hildebrand, Heliodor Maximilian Manderville. What are we doing? Yep. Vivi. Yep, true to form. Ugh. It's like it never happened. With the last of his strength, he turned back the hands of time. Not just for the pillars, but for us all. He made us all as we once were, as we were meant to be. All that gallivanting about and I get bugger all. What about my misspent youth? I was not meant to be this bloody old. Ah, oh, such a fine day. Never have I squatted with such perfect form. I may well reach my physical peak. <laughs> oh, what rot. Act your age, you daft sod. You look foolish. Should be grateful, GG. GG saw you and become and gave you a second chance. That was our second chance to relive our glory days. It was all rather silly though, wasn't it? Maybe Quan had the right of it. Maybe it's not too bad going old. I was a coward when I was young, but now that I'm old, I'm not afraid to say things like, I love you, Doris. Huh.
You blind bloody fool, Gonspart. Hmm. Age is just a number. After all. I say, am I dead again? Quite alive, Inspector, along with everyone else, thanks to Chi Chi. The Grand Sirs are also in custody. E. Ah, that's my boy. Where's the little tyke anyway? Uh oh. Gigi, he. Gigi embarked on a grand adventure. He's no longer with us. Hmm. I see. That's what he wanted. Then I cannot be happier for him. I am sure Archmages Quan would feel the same way. What do we do now, Inspector? Is it not obvious, Nashu? The wide, wide world beckons to us with the promise of mystery and wonder. Shall resume our never ending quest for cases perplexing and profound? And perhaps one day we shall meet young Gigi again. Flex. Flex. E. Hate to admit it, but this whole bloody mess got me thinking that maybe... Maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I really did have a grandson. You did right by Gigi, Hildy. Your father and I can see to that. We're proud of the man you've become. I am proud of you too, mother. Only coming to terms with the ephemeral nature of physical beauty and allowing yourself to age gracefully. Ye. Uh-oh. Um... <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Gracefully, was it? I fear we may have been failure to communicate. And off he goes again. There he goes again. Wait for me, Inspector. Wait. Hawk, what is that curious light I spy in the far eastern skies? And this... Oh, so familiar scent which fills my nostrils. Do I smell a case? Worry not for me, my friends, for whatever the wronged want for succor, I, Hildebrand, shall be there till we meet again. Bye, Hildy. See you in Stormblood.
I say, you do know that as long as the core remains intact, little Gigi is not actually dead. That's right, so dry your tears, boy. There's no need for all this moping about. He has fallen from a dormant state because he used up all his ether. His core will gradually recharge as it draws upon the ambient ether, and in time he will awaken from his torpor. I shall tend to the child for now. This is kind of like a, a character uh, development from him. As for these three, I shall be glad to take them back to Ishgard in your stead. Most generous offer, my lord, but hardly necessary. After all, tis my duty to bring them to justice. Oh yes, it was my duty. After everything I said to that young Inquisitor, I can't bring, be back, go back to Ishgard. They'll toss me in a gal and throw away the key if they don't kill me outright. So go to Idleshire and live in Hildy's gazebo. Someone ought to look after it while he's away, no? That doesn't sound so bad, actually. Full glad am I to accept your offer. Not in approval. Ugh. <sighs> Suppose there's nothing for it, nothing for it, but wait until he comes back down. It was a most graceful strike, my love. You haven't lost your touch. And another happy ending. Whatever that was. <laughs> I suppose there's nothing for it but to leave the Grand Sir to Lord Godward for me to see the ins to Inspector Hildebrand's gazebo. I'd like to thank you for everything you've done. You find yourself in Idleshire. Come and see me. There are a few arrangements that I need to make, but I cannot imagine that it will take that long for me to settle in. Thank you, my friend. Until we meet again. Uh, speak with Sir in Idleshire. Okay. Looking back on the course I've run, it's hard to not think of the man I was and feel ashamed. Before I took on this case, I had only left the capital a handful of times, the rubbish I believed, the facts I considered unas unassailable. Very take me, what a fool I was. If I hadn't met you and the inspector and Gigi, I would have never realized how much I've come to hate my job, nor would I have discovered how much more satisfying it is to seek out the truth, the whole truth. One might say that getting labeled a heretic and having to flee Ishgard is the best thing that could have happened to me. After all, now that I am free to start a new life here in Idleshire as a consulting inspector. Pretty cool. Happy for you. Ah, uh, but enough of that. There is someone I would like you to meet. Lord Gobbert made some modifications, and as you could see, his smaller size should allow him to absorb ether more effectively effectively over time. We thought that if he were to travel with you and share in your grand adventures, that maybe maybe you would hasten his reawakening. Yay! Now we have a son too. Thank you, my friend. I do hope our paths cross again someday. May the fury bless you and keep you. We have a son. Awesome.
All right, sneak peek maybe of next time or end credits. That mural is so cute. Yeah, keep it up. Yep, good job. I wish I could read that writing right there. Oh, the little, uh, Copelands. I have to see them during this quest. Hildebrand will return. That was really wholesome. Despite the insanity, that was really, really good. Okay, let's say hi to our new friend. Also known as Vivi, but his secret is safe with you. Yay. Yeah, that was a cute quest line. I was also like very, uh, Pretty Hildebrand-esque, but they did, they did go a little uh, over the top compared to like the last uh, Hildebrand quest. Let's say hi. Hi, GG. Hello. Aw, oh, you did the thing. Okay, um... Pet. Good job. Good job, uh, GG. Okay, uh, let's go, uh, wrap up here. And, uh, say our, our goodbyes. Let's head back. Yeah, this was a very productive, uh, stream today. And uh, yeah, I think that is it for uh, tonight. Uh, my throat is really, really uh, uh, dry and sore from all the talking I've done in voice acting. But this was a fun, cute, adorable, wholesome little uh, quest with uh, Gigi. I'm really glad that uh, Gigi was really a part of this because I loved Vivi in Final Fantasy IX. And it was, it was really wholesome. It was chaotic, but it was, it was wonderful. Okay. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all uh, next time. So take care and have a good night, everyone. Goodbye.